hi welcome to this session of my video and right in this video i'm going to take you through on how to structure program and courses every academic program have courses that are embedded in that program so first and foremost we need to find out how such courses can be taken care of how do you develop them how do you come up with them that they will be able to actually meet what you want them to do and in this case we're going to look at how you can structure these courses to meet such a program so i am professor Jaja juliet negbedio that will be walking you through structuring program and courses now let's begin with the learning outcome after watching this video you will be able to identify the criteria guiding the structuring of courses in a program then you'll be able to structure courses for learning a specific program to meet the program objective now let's look at the criteria guiding the structuring of courses in a program first and foremost we have to look at the program objective and you have the required competencies to meet the program objective so again we we'll have to come up with the learning resources required to meet the program objective and you need the learning activity required to meet the program objective and finally we need to define the learning environment where that program is going to run. Now let's start with setting program objective. When working with program objective, the first thing you need to do is to define the purpose of that program. Because without the purpose, you will not be able to derive the objective. The purpose of the program gives you the objective. And this normally comes up where you do your need assessment before you start running a program an academic program and that need assessment would have been able to give you the gap that exists that that program is coming to fill any program that is set up without a need assessment without identifying the purpose without identifying the gap that is going to fill you will find it difficult getting the actual program objective that you require so with this you will be able to derive the program objective to meet the need of the employer, the learner, the labor market, and the societal needs. The next one we need to look at is how sustainable is this program in filling the identified gaps? Because you must look for a way to know that, oh yes, this program is going to be sustainable. It's going to be on for a very long time and you'll still be able to meet up with those things that you need to meet up. So you need to identify those things that, that will make this program sustainable. Then what are the major knowledge or ability that is required to fill this gap? Because you have a program, you have a purpose for the program, you have been able to identify a gap, and you set up this program to fill up that gap. So right now, you need to be able to come up with the knowledge or the skills or the abilities that are required to fill that gap through that program. Now, turn the identified knowledge or abilities into your teacher's focus, because that is the focus you have as the instructor, that is the focus you have as a designer, as an instructional designer, that is the focus you have that you're going to use to derive the courses that you're going to teach or you're going to present to the learners to learn in this particular program. So once you are able to get those abilities, turn those abilities into objectives now stating them in measurable terms now deriving courses from the program objective what do you now do is to map you have your program objective you have set the program objective so having said the program objective what will you now map with the program objective now you have to define the learning resources the competencies required and you need to look at the learning environment that we have to meet the program objective so let's quickly look at this this is a sample now let's look at this here we we'll have name of program for example is bsc digital learning technology for teachers and the program duration is four years and that will be eight semesters and right here we have this table we have serial number program objective required competencies required learning activity required learning resources required learning environment now if you look through the first column right here that is the serial number and under the program objective the, the the objective of this program here as stated to develop human capacity the focus the bigger focus the aim is to develop human capacity developing human capacity in what in digital learning design in digital learning experiences and in digital learning management so these are the focus that this program has that it wants to meet 
which means a gap would have been identified before setting up this program that there is lack of depth of manpower in digital learning design or in digital learning experiences or digital learning management. Now, having done that, the next thing we now need to look at is to find out what will be the competencies that will be required for us to deal with these things. And for you to be able to come out to be a digital learning designer, digital learning experience, uh, bringing digital learning experiences, and again, digital learning management, it means you will have these skills, analytical skill, evaluation skill, creative skill, constructive skill, resilient skill, communication skill, pedagogical skill, and patience. Now, having done that, we come up to the first one, which is digital learning design. Now, what are the activities that you require for the learner to do that will help the learner come up and actually achieve this learning object, the, sorry, the program objective? First and foremost is working with learning theories. It means if you work with learning theories, we'll be able to have competency capacity to design and a digital learning uh, process. Then create and working with online ecosystem managing online learning behavior, the design process. Now, what would be the resources that will be required? Here is the ability to illustrate on how theories are used or digital learning design, simulating learning and design. Then what will be the required learning environment? The learning environment is more or self-driven because when you want to design, you have to think of the learning environment where you're going to deploy these, uh, uh, the, the courses. Because right here, it could be facilitators, like it could be self-driven, it could be a combination, and it could be online, it could be in-person, and again, you need to describe the type of elements that where this will be floated if you're going to be virtual. So these are part of the learning environments you need to bring in place. Outside this, even the learning environment also to be a kind of infrastructure you need to put in place. So that is for the first one. The second one is digital learning experiences. Under that, again, we have here, you can see, creating interactive content, because these are learning uh, activities that will make this course, that will make this particular objective to be achieved. So the ability to create interactive content, creating and working with uh, learning resources, the assessment and engagement. Then other resources, you are looking for collaborative tools and software. It means what you will need that will help you to achieve this objective, you will need these tools to help you achieve this objective. And you need some illustration. You want to have a collaboration. And here you want to make sure that the students are able to collaborate among themselves and they're able to share. We have dummy elements. It means you want an environment, a learning environment where the student will be able to do some practicals. Practice to be able to see if what they have designed will come in. So these are things you need to check. And here, finally, you have learning, digital learning management. So right here, what are the activities using technology in managing digital learning? Using technology in enhancing digital learning and learning analytics. So these are learning activities that we have to achieve this objective. Now, having done that, you come to the area of the learning resources. At the learning resources, you have AI tools for managing learning, the statistical tools for data analysis and simulated learners. Now, what are we talking about here? What you're saying, it means for you to be able to use technology here, manage it, you need an AI tool. That is what the resource you will need. And in this case, you need to find out, will there be AI tools? If the AI tools will not be there, that is going to if affect the way you will structure the courses that will be here. And what will be the learning? You just need a dummy element. Now, let's move on. Now, once you have been able to do that, what will be the next for you to do? The next is to derive the courses from the learning activities. Right here, look at it. We have the learning activities. So from the learning activities, we cannot derive the courses because the learning activities are the things you're going to do that will help you achieve the program objective. And remember, the program objective has a purpose you need to fill. It has a gap that is not going to uh, fill. And it has maybe uh, challenges that have been identified that this will help to. So when you now come to these learning activities, the learning activities is what will now help you to meet up with this. So from this learning activities now, 
we're going to generate the courses. And in this regard, let's take activity one, for example, let's look at the activity one here, working with learning theories. That is the first activity here. So we're going to work with this learning, we are working with learning theories, and let's see how that turns out. So working with learning theories, you now look at it. Working with learning theories, you now have to think through, because that's why you have to be creative. You have to think through. What will be things that will come out of it? Okay, theories of learning, theories for digital learning, theory development, application of theories in digital education. And if you look through this, you cannot think through again. Can each of these theories stand as a module? Because when you're talking about a module, a module should be something that is a, having a bigger team, covering a bigger team, and that team can be a standalone. If you design your courses very well into modules and units, that module will be able to encompass maybe even up to other courses that we bring out as a standalone. It will stand as a course. A module can stand as a course in some areas. So don't be carried away by having so many courses, but look at the structuring to ensure that a team is formed to make that module. A team is structured to make that module. That that module can stand alone. Somebody can even come and pick that module and do it as a certificate course, and it will still be able to get through. Then in this case, if you look through it, theories of learning, we can't use that to stand as a course. The theories of digital learning, we can't. So if you look at all this, they cannot stand alone as a course. So what did I do? is to pull all of them together and call it theories in learning. So theories in learning, look at all these things in, of, for, of. They are not the same. So theories in learning. Under theories in learning, I cannot have these ones break down as module under the course. So the course here I have is theories in learning. Now, if you look at activity two, say creating and working with online ecosystem. Look at it here. That is our activity too. Creating and working with online ecosystem. But if you come in here again, we cannot break it further. So this can just stand as a course also. Ecosystem in digital education. So we're not going to go further and work with this. So how do you now structure it into the courses into level? Because you're going to structure the courses now into level from simple to complex. So what you need to do at first, you may not bother of the orderliness, just pull them down. After that, you now start ordering it, looking at those that are simple, start from there, that will start from 100 level and get it to complex. So for example, here, I have my serial number, I have a space for code, the coding system will be resting with the side how they want to do the coding. But what we are mostly concerned with here is the theory, the uh, course title. So we have here theories in digital education. The hours of study per week is very important. You need to calculate the hours of study because we must be mindful of the student workload. We shouldn't pack everything. We should look at, remember, the number of studies the student is going to read, number of papers, number of tests, videos is going to watch, all this will form the workload. And the workload we have to use to determine the credit unit. You know, in the normal face-to-face, -face, the way they calculate the credit unit, they use the contact hour, the lecture contact hour. They don't even consider the hours the students spend doing private study, but they don't look at the contact hour. For example, if the contact hour in a week for the lecture is two hours, oh, they sell the workload, two credit units. But when you are dealing with online learners, you have to look at their study hours beyond just maybe the time they might spend with their video uh, facilitation and so on, real time facilitation, maybe one hour, 30 minutes or thereabout. Then you just say, oh, no, we can just get to know. Because when you do that, you are going to weigh them down with your workload. And in this case, also, we're going to look at it now. We have six. The credit unit sees the level of study is 100 level. Now, we now to have to define, is it a core? Is it an elective? Is it required? Core means compulsory. This student must take it. Elective, well, choose it. It is not really uh, required. It is not compulsory. But if it is required, although it's not core, you need that course for the student to be able to progress. So you need it to put it here. Because maybe it's a course that the student needs to have mastered before you will be able to master the next available ones. So once that has been done, you have to just oppose 
your cost listing with the national benchmark. Let me use the case of Nigeria. In Nigeria, we have the National Universities Commission. And with the National University Commission, we have the benchmark they've given to us. So you don't start with the benchmark. Start with your, because this is what will differentiate you from other universities, from other programs, from other institutions. Because remember recently, when they came up with the, uh, the 60 months, what was it? They gave you 30%. And that 30%, they expect you to distinguish yourself from other universities. So in this regard, you cannot look at it because of accreditation. If there is anyone that is not enlisted, you now look through what you have and know where it fits in. And sometimes some of these courses may have come up under what you have developed as a module. Because some of the courses can just be best for a module and not a course. So you now integrate it because what NUC is after when they come for your accreditation is to ensure that that knowledge is being covered in what you are doing and nothing is missing. Then your design makes you to stand out among other persons. Now let's summarize this. We have been able to look at, identify the program because you have to identify the program you will need to work on, then state the program objective, map the program objective with the required competencies, learning activities, resources, and the environment, then derive the course from the learning activities. Now, having done that, I sign hours of study per week and credit unit. So when this has been done, the last thing that is left for you to do is to categorize the courses into the different level. If it's an undergraduate course, we have to know the number of years that person needs to spend. Is it a four-year course? If it's a four-year course, what are the courses that will come up at 100 level, 200 level, and 300 level, then 400 level, and so on. So with this, I want to thank you for listening. Try and practice what you have heard.